So hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows, the place where you can get the latest virtual reality news updates. Please join me in the community by following me on Twitter and Instagram so you will be aware as soon as news becomes available. So this is a good news, bad news kind of situation, so let's start with the bad news, Pavlov. Some news around Pavlov, the VR multiplayer shooter from Dave Vils that is currently available now on PC for you to play or if you want to use the Oculus Link or you can still play it on the Oculus Quest if you know how to sideload. I believe we're now on build 18 so you can get those files from Dave Vils Discord and start playing on the Oculus Quest. But this news is around the official release into the Oculus Store where we have been given a date of December 19th. It was going to be a glorious day. But this has fallen through after Dave Vils posted on his Discord that they would not be able to meet the approaching deadline due to the party issues. And I think Oculus at this point have the build he is referring to so he's unable to actually access it and update the code to make fixes. Without having to go through the tour you may have seen in my Oculus policy video. And with the holidays being around the corner he doesn't see a fix occurring until next year, early 2020. This is a sad time. I know myself and many were looking forward to the Christmas shootout with people getting new quests, but I guess that will have to wait. He did state that this extra time will allow custom servers and custom maps to be ready for the time of release. Luckily, there is a ton of games in December for us to enjoy, but it's sad that this highly anticipated title, again, we have another delay. Maybe brush up on your side loading ability so you can play this title right now. Next, Alchemy Lab shares how it managed to get Vacation Simulator onto the Oculus Quest with the use of some interesting techniques. I have seen other devs use them as well to optimize the game for the Quest Limited hardware. Vacation Simulator is coming December 12th and will be 30 bucks or $22.99. So Alchemy posted on Twitter some techniques used such as what's called occlusion. They said this, We turn a lot of things on and off in the scene depending on where the player is and what they can actually see. Bushes, objects, colliders, scene effects like snow, even complex bot animations. Anything is fair game. And alongside this, they showed some footage at the same time so you can visualize what they're talking about. It's also, of course, using foveated rendering. We're aware of this technique already. Some games use it a lot. Too much. And another thing that they've done where they show the actual footage of the structure of assets is this. They stated sandcastles were originally created as a matrix of cubes placed together. We created a system that dynamically reduces your sand masterpiece into the fewest number of box colliders in real time to improve performance. Fewer colliders is always better. So if they've automated this process, that is incredible for future Alchemy Labs games and how they're going to perform on the Oculus Quest. So be aware of Alchemy Labs future releases. And because of these techniques, apparently the game runs incredibly on the Quest. So when it hits December 12th, guys, please let me know how this game plays. I'd love to know what you think. I like putting these stories in the news videos because it's great for a consumer to be in the know of what's going on. Next, O-Shape leaves early access this Friday the 13th. And boy, it comes with a big update. This title is available on the Quest and is an adaption of the game, Hole in the Wall, where the user has to move their bodies into positions to fit through the gaps on the oncoming walls. This is an active game, so combine this with your calorie counter and you'll be Dwayne Rock Johnson in no time. Maybe not. So the last update is going to contain the following. Added custom songs, a new UI design, new walls and old walls improved, some easy levels improved, new configuration menus, an added speed option, accuracy option, no fail, small room, volume, an added in-game pause menu, thank you, stage improvements, open VR improvements for hands, inputs and haptics, scoring system updates as well. This has to be purchased on the Quest if you're going to purchase this on any system. The wireless nature of the system is perfect for these sort of plays. So the big story, the hand tracking was mentioned in my previous news video, but I want to take this opportunity to go through some more items on that topic so you guys are in the know. So although Pavlov is delayed, it seems like the hand tracking is coming much earlier than expected. Some people have already got the version 12 update that contains the hand tracking feature. If you go under settings, then experiments, there you'll find the experimental features. And here you can enable hand tracking. And you will now have a hand icon in your main home menu of which you can select and toggle between the touch controllers and hand tracking. The hand tracking can only be used for navigation at this point in time and only used in certain apps such as the Oculus Home, Oculus TV, the Store and the Browser. So nothing crazy, but enough for you to get a feel of what the tracking capabilities are of this feature. Games can also enable this, but they have to be integrated by the developer. So the SDK software development kit is going to be made available for developers next week. So depending how well this feature works and the maturity of the SDK, 
we could potentially be seeing some really interesting new gameplay mechanics in early 2020 on the Oculus systems. I'd love to be able to play super hot with no remote so I can throw things without fear of throwing my controllers. I don't expect Beat Saber to handle such tracking, it seems very fast paced. But things like VR chat, where you can have more expressive movement with our hands, whether it be inappropriate or not, behave! It's open for creative possibilities. I also have an inkling or a rumor that Waltz of the Wizard will be enabling such features as the developers state they have a big surprise coming next month. It seems interesting that this drops now, and I read somewhere that they expect to enable gesture based spells. It would, for sure, be a great game selling feature, of which I am hoping. Another step closer to the Oasis. So that's it from me today, guys. I just wanted to give you some more information around the hand tracking than I did yesterday. So just letting you know that it was available and some big news drops about Pavlov that I am so sad about. So thanks for sticking around and watching Steve News. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.